Hello. Welcome to Tai Chi Misconceptions. I am Kevin. So, uh, it being Saturday, I'm not going to stand in the in the Wuji stance today. Um, but I want to talk about Chi, because it's been bugging me all week, and I think I've been trying to talk about it on the channel, but it's really hard to maintain thoughts while you're doing that stance. Mostly because bones and joints keep moving. So, Chi, to me, is a very interesting concept. Um, I like to say that Chi is an adjective when in reality even that's not quite right because a noun is a person, place, a thing, or an idea. You know, like a, a holiday is a noun. It's an idea. It doesn't actually exist outside of our mind. It's the same with chi. Chi is an idea. And in that case it does classify itself as a noun. But when it is being used, it is an adjective. We describe we describe doing something else as moving our chi. We, we, it is a... It's a placeholder in our thought pattern, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, perhaps maybe you've heard of the God of the Gaps argument. The God of the Gaps argument being that uh, in the furthest recesses of science, where science is yet to look, that is where you will find God. Uh, As science gets better and better explaining the universe, people have less and less places to put their faith. Um, I think Qi is a lot like that. The, the, the ancient people of China had yet to really... Well, it's taboo to do autopsies. It's where um, acupuncture in Chinese medicine came from. It came from uh, trial and error um, and not having all the data. They couldn't look inside the body, they couldn't discover the fossil structures, they couldn't discover the tendon structures. So a lot of the things that we now equate to Qi had to be described somehow. And you use your Qi in the same way that you would exercise a tendon. You use your chi in the same way that you would exercise a specific muscle group. You focus on that area intentionally. That's using your chi. It's, it's an adjective in that case. Uh, it's also... So while I don't mind it when people say the word chi to me as when they're describing something they're doing, um, I can decode that. I can hear someone say, and I want you to do this with your chi, and I can instead hear, oh, okay, you want me to put my weight on this leg and you want me to move through this pattern. I get that. I, I can do that. I, I, can, I, can, I can decode the mysticism because I understand that at the seat of that mysticism is proper functioning science. People lose me when they either A, try to justify the mysticism with more mysticism, or B, claim that Tai Chi can do more than it is actually capable of via mysticism. I read a book a while back, uh, uh, Tai Chi Demystified. Uh, I got an audiobook, I got it through Audible, and... I thought it was a really great book. Um, the author, whose name I can't remember, said something about gathering chi and moving chi, and he talked about it in the same way that I think about it, so it was easy to follow. And then he said, except for throwing chi balls, which you need chi gong to do. And I'm like, yeah, no, we're out now. I just, uh, uh, As a descriptor, it's a great way to convince people what you need them to do with their mind and their body. I need you to focus on this part of your body. I need you to feel these sensations and these movements. So, I'm going to continue using the adjective known as chi when dealing with mindfulness practice in our martial arts. 
because it is a great shorthand, we all know. But I just want to put it out there right away that I do not believe that she is a noun. It is not a thing that can be grasped or thought or, or, or controlled. You can learn how to control your own mind and you can control how to learn your own muscles and you can control how to, you can, you can, you can uh, recode your nervous system a little bit. And that's all using chi. Because you're using your intent, you're using your mind, you're using your thoughts. You're using your intention. You're using your intention coupled with hard physical work. Because if you're doing the hard physical work and you're not mentally thinking about the muscles you're working on, you're not going to get as good of results. So, that's chi. I do realize people use the word to describe other things in other ways, which, again, still believe it's an adjective. Um, when you discuss the idea of splitting your chi, splitting your intention, um, I'm going to pull with my legs, I'm going to pull with my arms, I'm going to do them both at the same time. Um, I'm going to go up with my torso and down with my, my hips, I'm going to do both at the same time. So splitting our chi is splitting our intention. That's a simple concept that just needs to be practiced and turned into how we move, which is through practice of the form and through the process of push hands. That's uh, hard work and practice. The other thing that came up the other day when I was doing push hands, and I want to bring this up because I think it's interesting. The gentleman I, I, I practice with, as I mentioned many times before on this channel, is a wrestler. And he has a very hard hands, push hand style. And he had me in an arm bar and I managed to wiggle out of it, essentially. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that I was using, I, I've been working almost exclusively on the pulling muscles, the, the, the lower muscles. And I've been working a lot on the, the, the lower half of the scapula, the muscle structure down there. And so I was able to pull him down with just my shoulders because I had worked those muscles. He was prepared for someone to fight him in a different direction because that's where the people are prepared. That's how people practice. So, honestly... So that, that would be the idea of the, the yin chi defeating the yang chi, because the, the, the is lower, specifically lower. These muscles are lower than these muscles. So these are the yin muscles of your shoulder girdle. So I think when they discuss our yin defeating our opponent's yang, that's a lot to do with it. Just using separate muscles, separate muscle groups, muscle groups that are designed to do the opposite of. And fighting that way, training ourselves to fight with the opposite muscle groups. I think that's what is, I think that is they, what they are describing when they say the yin defeating the yang. Um, that's kind of all I got for today. It's just, uh, I've been really stuck on the idea of chi, because I don't like the word, but unfortunately it's the best word to describe what we need people to do, especially beginners. Uh, I got lucky. Most of the people I work with come from a very strong medical background. I can say the words, I need you to focus on your piriformis, and they will go, oh, okay. It helps. Anyways, I'm Kevin. This is Tai Chi Misconceptions. Y'all be good to yourselves out there.